We have a couple of some pretty neat topics that we're going to discuss today, but I um, want to start off with one topic that I think deserves mentioning, and that is we are the 200th city to commit to the National Wildlife Federation's Monarch Pledge, and we have um, seen uh, our city get on board in a variety of different ways that includes some activities that I came across out at the old uh, school district that I served for 12 years. Mays High School has um, been building a um, monarch preserve out there to help with the um, Save the Monarch movement that's been crisscrossing our country, and I think it's great for us to make this pledge committing to help monarchs and other pollinators. If um, you need a science lesson and understand the importance of some of these species to what it means to our community and many other communities. I'm happy to help connect you with some really good science teachers, Lonnie, that can help you understand what it means to save something as small as a monarch butterfly. I um, also want have two gentlemen here that's going to help me today our fire chief who's going to talk about some very dedicated first responders in our community, some pretty prestigious awards that uh, they have received and the chief is going to name these individuals and um, present their awards to them. Three firefighters have received the 2015 Firehouse Magazine Michael O. McNamee Award for Valor. And this award reflects a larger mission to change firefighters' perspectives on what it means to um, be brave in the face of danger. Also, we have someone that's being recognized by the 2016 Sedgwick County EMS Employee Association, Brian Johnston, First Responder Award. And Chief, I'm going to turn this over to you and let you present these. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, good morning. We have a, a number of our firefighters with us here this morning. We also have members of their families that I wanted to take just a moment to recognize and to uh, direct some attention to Richard Kanega, who is a Wichita firefighter retiree, whose son, Rob, is one of the people we'll be recognizing this morning. So I'd ask our firefighters to join me here at the podium. You know, we here at the city are often uh, encouraged by the mayor and the manager to uh, recognize uh, employees who do good things and to celebrate our successes. So it is a real pleasure for me this morning uh, to share with you stories of local heroes who have demonstrated courage uh, often on a daily basis, but uh, at specific incidents that led to recognition from organizations nationally and certainly locally, beginning with uh, Rob Kanega. Uh, Rob, if you'll take a step forward, please. Wichita fire crews were operating at an apartment complex fire located at 1345 West of Walker on March 15, 2015, when two apartments were being consumed by flame. Captain Kanega extinguished the fire in one apartment when he was diverted to a second apartment to check for possible victims. While facing intense heat, smoke, and reduced visibility, Kanega located a barely conscious patient and removed her from the apartment where he was met by another firefighter who helped her exit the building. Uh, for his actions, Captain Kanega is recognized by Firehouse Magazine with the 2015 Michael O. McNamee Award for Valor. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> also with us is firefighter Tim Robinson. Tim. Wichita crews responded to a person who had fallen through ice on a pond in Harrison Park at 1300 South Webb Road on March 3rd, 2015, while trying to rescue her dog. The woman was trying to rescue her dog. Crews made an initial effort to rescue the struggling woman by throwing her a rope, but she was too weak and the effort was unsuccessful. Firefighter Robinson, showing great initiative, attached a rope to his personal flotation device and entered the freezing water to rescue the victim. Robinson made it about 30 feet from shore and after two attempts was able to successfully get a rope to the victim and her dog. 
uh, due, due to his actions, they both survived what certainly would have been a tragic incident. Tim Robinson. Next, we'll recognize firefighter Jesse Jansen. Jesse, while operating at an apartment fire at 8905 East Harry on November 12th, 2015, uh, responded to a call where there were reports of persons trapped. Jansen heard screams from self-evacuating occupants who indicated that an apartment on the first floor was still occupied. Jansen, according to those present, walked through flames to enter the apartment and was able to locate an elderly woman who was conscious but lying on a bed. Jansen led the woman to safety through the unburned portion of the building, and for his actions, he too is a Michael O. McNamee Award winner. Our final honoree is Firefighter Greg Gorgeous. You know, here in Wichita, the uh, majority of our calls are emergency medical calls, and we take great pride in the first responder service that we provide to local citizens and residents. Uh, Firefighter Gorgeous was recognized by the Cedric County Emergency Medical Service Employees Association, so these are his peers and his colleagues who he works with on a daily basis. Firefighter Gorgeous responded with EMS to a motor vehicle accident with a patient who was pinned on May 17, 2016, near the intersection of 119th Street West and Maple. Firefighter Gorgeous demonstrated exceptional care, coordination, communication, and patient advocacy. Gorgeous was inside a destroyed SUV for nearly an hour with a patient. The interior was mangled and cramped, and he was professional and reassuring to the patient the entire time. He provided timely updates with patient information to paramedics on scene, which allowed for efficient and effective patient care. Greg Gorgeous. In addition to those uh, recognitions, the department learned this week that Jesse Jansen will be the 2016 Thomas McGoy Award winner uh, for his bravery and courage at the, at the call in which he responded. Uh, the Thomas McGoy Award has special meaning for us here in, in Wichita in that Thomas McGoy was the eighth Wichita fire, fire chief and one of four firefighters who were killed at the Yingling Chevrolet fire on November 21st, 1968. Uh, so, Jesse, congratulations, and to all our heroes, thank you all. Thank you all very, very much. And I know they had some family members here today. Would some of the family members here today supporting them stand up? Because you all are just as important. Thank you. Absolutely. I know you all are very proud of them, as we are very proud of them. And I can tell you their community is very proud of the service that they do. Uh, Public safety is still one of those key elements that we um, hold in high regard. And so thank you for your service, and we appreciate the, uh, the way that you go about it. And it's nice to get recognition once in a while. I know you'd, you all probably think that uh, you don't deserve it, but it's very nice to see it happen, and we appreciate everything that you do. And speaking of recognition, we're pretty proud of our Wichita Park Department, and they received a very special recognition recently. Um, our Wichita Park and Rec was officially accredited on October the 4th at the National Park and Rec Conference in St. Louis. And the Commission for Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies, you can call it CAPRA if you want, is a process of appraisal. It's an opportunity for park and rec agencies to demonstrate that they meet the required standards to provide ongoing quality programs, services, and facilities to their citizens. Accreditation is based on an agency's compliance with the 151 national standards. This is a significant recognition. Very few park departments are able to receive or meet these kinds of standards to achieve this 
accreditation. And so we have with us today Matt Townsend, who's going to share a little bit more about what this accreditation means and what it means to our park department. Mr. Mayor, is our certificate? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good morning. What CAPRA means for the general public is that they have the assurance that our services, our facilities, and our customer service is validated by national standards. We are very grateful to have this validation by an external government source, and it serves to hold the agency, the department, accountable for the services we provide and also our customer service. As our director, Troy Houtman, has said, it has also led to a philosophical shift in how we do business in the park department. We are, have always been very customer service focused, but we make sure we pay very close attention to the needs of our citizens and that we are adaptive and responsive to those needs and that we continue to have an exceptionally high standard of service of what we provide and what we have available to the public with our facilities. That's awesome. So um, very cool stuff. We appreciate the hard work that it took to receive this kind of accreditation. And um, on behalf of the city, your city council, and your city manager, we thank you for being able to achieve this. Thank you, thank Mr. Thank you very much. I'll let you hang on to that. So unlike your mayor, you're more about being just pretty and having pretty things planted. You're accountable. Um, really good stuff. We do have uh, another topic that we discussed in a workshop recently that I think merits uh, some additional information, and that is what we are doing in terms of um, trying to provide our citizens the best infrastructure that they can have uh, with regard to streets. We have done numerous surveys and received a lot of feedback from the community through town hall meetings, social media, and a number of other um, avenues to provide citizen input. And we have been listening to our citizens and we're focusing on um, fixing our streets. We heard just recently in the workshop the kinds of dollars that we're going to be putting in our streets and it's substantial. It's a, it's a difference of what used to be about $4 million a year to over the next couple of years is going to be closer to $22 million put into streets. And you can see on this chart to my right, it has some information on there. One of those is the um, ongoing investment that we're making every year. That $4 million has now jumped to $8 million over the last few years. And by 2020, it's going to be 11 million. And we're talking about taking, uh, in addition to that, some of the proceeds from selling the Hyatt and um, putting that into our neighborhood streets that will change the drivability and the infrastructure of our streets. Each month, we'll provide an update on what we're doing in our streets so you can see exactly what's happening. These topics will include street cleaning, pothole patching, and different types of street repairs. We're trying to make it easy for the community to access this information and much of it will be online. We'll also update you on our efforts with the work on the state of Kellogg improvements. I know that's important to everyone. Um, how we've enhanced our snow and ice response and what we're working on to improve traffic signalization and reduce delays. So those are just um, Part of the topics that we're going to try and keep you abreast of on a regular basis, just to give you some idea of um, how much pavement we are dealing with, if you put all of the Wichita streets into a single lane, you could pave a road from Wichita to Rome. Public Works and Utilities maintains about 5,000, 5,000 lane miles of residential collector and arterial streets in our community. I mentioned some of the changes in funding over the recent years, going from $4 million to $8 million, and by 2020, $11 million. Um, our investments into our infrastructure, we believe, are paying off. The value of street network rose from $444 million in 2014 to $501 million. $501 million investment in 2015. A number of these improvements have made it 
have been made in response to citizen feedback, such as efforts to mitigate the dust of dirt roads near schools and an increase in bike lane markings. So I'll give you some comparisons. When comparing traffic to cities of similar size, Wichita ranks 29th, 29th out of 101 urban areas for lowest traffic delay. Our neighbors uh, in Tulsa and Oklahoma City rank 68th and 82 respectively. This means that Wichita's not only enjoy a commute that takes less time, but also costs less in fuel consumption. Maintenance includes repairs, sweeping, snow, ice removal, um, it also includes 169 lane miles of unpaved streets, which, as I mentioned, we're trying to do more in terms of dust control and some other things. 429 signalized intersections. We serve 60,000 traffic signs. Potholes passed, patched each year. If you go all the way back to 2012, it's averaging, well, we've had 47,000 in 2012, and I think some of these numbers might be up here. You can see them over here on the right to uh, a high in 2015 of 75,520. And we've purchased some new equipment that enable us to fix those and um, create a, a um, better patch system that lasts longer, and, and we're going to continue to reach out for some of these new techniques as we try and find these solutions that... Uh, give us the most bang for our dollar, make it more efficient, and um, help us get our streets in the kind of condition that our citizens certainly demand and deserve. So at that point in time, we'll open up for questions and we can bring those firefighters back up. Any any questions? Yes. Sure. Right, right. We're going to offer um, free bus service to those that uh, can show that they've went out and voted, and so they're going to get um, a uh, token. I don't. Uh, if you show that you've got an "I voted" button on it, it's simple as that. You're going to get some kind of a token that allows you to ride the bus for free. So it's on, on the way home. It's, it's not a round trip. So it's going to be. So it's going to be offered as um, the same amount of money you would purchase, so you can spend it for a future bus ride. And so it doesn't recoup the cost. You're going to have to have the cost to get there. But uh, So we're not operating free bus service for the day, per se, for everyone riding the bus. But if you're riding the bus to go vote, you're going to get free bus service. Chief? Pick a spokesperson. You can't be shy when you're a hero. <laughs> hey, Jesse Akeem Ashford with KWCH. We just wanted to know, uh, to receive this award, such a great honor. How do you feel about it? Oh, I was, yeah, I'm incredibly honored. Um, with uh, a lot of the people that I've gotten to know on the job since I've started, just the great character and the great quality of people there are. It's just, it's an incredible honor to receive this award and be kind of counted among them, so. Uh, can you guys take us through, you know, the scenario that you went through? What do you think about when you think back to that day? Um, well, yeah, uh, it was in the middle of the night when the alarm came out, and the alarm came out as a person trapped in an apartment fire, so, um, at that point, I mean, I've, I've only had two years on the department now, a little over two years, so at that point I had a little over one year. And so I was, I was very, uh, very uh, excited, very, I mean, just the adrenaline was flowing, and we pulled up, got there first, and seeing the amount of flames and hearing people yelling, uh, there was a lot of adrenaline going, but it was... I just wanted to do my best, do you know whatever I could to perform the job. So um, glad to have had the opportunity. Glad to uh, have been put in a situation where I could offer some help. 
I'm Kevin Stieberl with KSN Channel 3. How much did your training, how much did, how much did you re, uh, refer back to your training in order to, to do the job you did? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, that's what I would probably, I mean, I'm most grateful for the guys that I work with, the amount of training that we've done, so that I was prepared in the situation that when I got there, there was, I mean, there was a little amount of trying to decide what I needed to do. It was just going and doing what I, you know, what my job was, so. And <laughs> I don't know about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate you and good stuff. Well, thank you all for coming today and um, appreciate your presence here.